Dashboard is always my favorite topic to cover. It is a great way to visually compress numerical data into compact form through the use of data visualization or also data summarization. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you could build a dashboard in Python using pure Streamlit. And there's no CSS customization needed. And so without further ado, let's get started. So the dashboard demo app here is provided at dashboard-kit.streamlit.app. And the underlying code is also provided here in the GitHub repository. Links will be provided in the video description. So let's have a look at the dashboard that we're going to be building today. So to the left side here, you're going to have the sidebar menu, which contains the logo. You could replace it with your own company's logo. You have the title here. You have the you know, settings, subheading, title. And then you have four widgets that allows the user to make selection and interactively engage with your dashboard. So here we have the start date. And you know, we could modify this to be other months, day, years as well. And then the data will be updated accordingly. And then we could choose to have it displayed in different time frames, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, or also quarterly. And for the bar chart here, you could also use area chart as well. And feel free to modify this code to display other types of data visualization, like a line chart or heat map if you like. And if you click here to minimize it, you're gonna see that you have the logo here, the minified version of the logo. And you could click here as well to expand the sidebar. And then you're gonna see that everything here will be expanded to fit the full width of the web page. So on the top layer part, you have the all time statistics. At the bottom part, you have the selected duration. So the selected duration is right here. When is your start and finish? So let me select January of 2024, and that will make it more visually clear. So you're gonna see that we have fewer bars here for the quarterly data, and then we have more bars here uh, for the all time data, which starts from the way back in 2019. So this data is hypothetical. It is generated using NumPy. And then we also accounted for, you know, occasional viral videos. Um, the start date was actually modeled from my own uh, personal YouTube channel, Data Professor, which was started back in August of 2019. Um, so yeah, but the underlying data here was generated numerically. Let's have a look. So the Jupyter Notebook is also provided in the repo as well. Here we're setting up the random seed for reproducibility, the number to be 42. We generate the dates for like two years. Well, actually, initially I generated for two years and then I kind of like, okay, let's move it back to 2019. So it's actually five years. Um, this is the data columns for the data frame that we're generating. Uh, we're creating the data frame here. We have the custom function to generate the growth of the stats that we're creating here. Uh, data columns included subscriber gain, lost, views, watch hours, likes, shares, comments. So all of the essentials for a YouTube channel analytics dashboard. Okay, so we'll provide, you know, like occasional weekend boosts of videos, uh, seasonal variation, um, occasional viral videos once every two months. Um, and yeah, all of this would then be saved into a CSV data, which will be provided right here. So data was from here, August 19, 2019 until 2024, September 15. Okay, so you could regenerate this code and then you'll be able to have a more up-to-date, um, longer time frame. Um, but yeah, the essential concept will be the same. Let's have a look at the Streamlit app.py file, which is used to create this particular dashboard. So let's have a look. So we're using set page config to have the layout wide. And then we're also setting the page title to be YouTube channel dashboard, which is right here, YouTube channel dashboard. And the layout is wide. Here are some of the helper functions that we're creating. 
we have the load data so that we could load in the CSV data and then catch the data so that it optimizes the speed and performance of the Streamlit app. We're creating our own custom quarter. Uh, so you know, in a year, there's gonna be four quarters and then our qu custom quarters will have the months of February until April as quarter one. And then we're gonna have months of May until July as quarter two and et cetera. We're then going to aggregate all of the data here. We're going to do a summation of the data and then it will be provided using the aggregate data function. And remember that you're able to select the different time frame here. Well, it's made possible by using this get, get weekly data, get monthly data, get quarterly data. And yeah, you could specify the input parameters right here, which would then be used by the frequency parameter. Um, in order to display the numerical values in the metrics, st.metrics, to have a comma here, we're actually using this very simple uh, custom function. We're gonna return it with the comma. And in order to generate the bar chart or the area chart, we're using a custom function called create metric chart. And as input, we're gonna have the data frame, the column to display, the color, because each of the respective section here have different bar colors. And then we also have specified the height to be 150 by default. And by default, it is specified to be daily, unless otherwise we select the time frame to be other uh, time frame. And then we have this custom function, is period complete to take a look back to about a month or a quarter or weekly or daily. We're also going to calculate the delta, which is essentially, you know, the, the delta value displayed here. So it is the last bar comparing to the two bars um, before the last, or actually the bar before the last bar, okay? If, if I'm not confusing. So it's comparing th these two last bars and it would take the difference. So you're gonna see that there's a drop of 48%, meaning that this bar goes to this bar and then there's a 50% dip, okay? And the dip is to be expected because the last quarter here, the last quarter is incomplete. Okay, so quarter three is not yet completed. It is only like about halfway through. Um, to be complete, it has to go through the end of October. Okay, and then it will be complete. Then it should then generate a decent, you know, exponential growth uh, increase in the bars here. And then we have the display metric here, which will generate the container. So you're gonna see that this container will generate a very nice uh, border around the st.metric value right here, and then the bar or area chart, as well as the underlying caption right here, uh, which is the note that is the incomplete data. Okay, so the st.metric, the st.bar chart or uh, area chart, and also the st.caption here, will be encapsulated inside the st.container, okay, which is here, encapsulated within st container using border to be true. Okay, and then we're using the create metric chart function that we have defined earlier on right here to generate our charts. All right, and so hopping on to the next segment of the code, we're going to load the data in. We're going to set up the logo, which we have two versions, the icon version and also the full version. The icon version is when the sidebar is collapsed. And then we have the full version here as well. So feel free to replace this with your own logos. And in the sidebar, we have st.title to be YouTube channel dashboard. And then as the header, we have settings. And then these are just kind of like the functions, variables to define the maximum date and also the, the start date uh, for the start date and date here. All right, and so the following are the defining of the various widget variables. So we have the uh, date input for the dates. We have select box for the drop down, which will allow you to select the time frame to be either daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. And then we also use the select box for selection of, of whether it is bar or area charts. And so these are the conditions. So depending on whether we clicked on daily, weekly, monthly, or quarterly, it will display a different data frame for us. It will retrieve different data frame. 
So if it's selected as daily, then the daily data frame will be selected. If it's monthly, then the monthly data frame will be selected and etc. And then here we have the all time statistics displayed using the ST subheader, which is right here. And then we're defining this list of the four metrics category that we are monitoring, including the subscriber views, watch hours and the likes and then the corresponding column names, which contains those metric, and then the colors that we want to have. So this hex color is corresponding to blue. And then the following is orange, and then we have uh, red, pink, and then we have purple right there. So here, line 149, we're defining it to have four columns, as you can see, one, two, three, four columns. And then we're displaying the metrics as defined earlier right here so everything is modular you could you know make changes to the custom functions and then this should be updated in no time then we have the st dot subheader for the selected duration and essentially everything else is the same except for we're selecting the selected duration data uh, for use instead of the all time data okay and so the same data will be displayed and then at the end, we're going to have the st.expander so that the user could select here, click on it, and then they'll be able to have the underlying data frame. Click on it again, it will be closed. And so all of this in 170 lines of code, fully interactive, you could replace the underlying data with your own. You could change the metrics to your own metrics that you are monitoring. And so, yeah, let me know in the comment section how you intend to use this dashboard to jumpstart your own dashboard. And as always, all of the code, the demo app link, the underlying repo here is provided in the video description. So let me know in the comment section if this video was helpful to you. Drop a balloon emoji in the comment section to let me know that you watched this video until the end. And as always, smash the like button, turn on notification, and also hit that subscribe button. And as always, happy streamlining.